Hey guys, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game and card game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Composition. Composition is a game for two or more players in which you're going to be basically building words with the the theme of music, in which case you're going to be taking them from this area, like a drafting game, sort of, and you're gonna be pulling them into your composition. As you do that, you're then going to be able to formulate words with those scoring points and utilizing those points to buy new and interesting letters. Those letters can come from two different spaces. And additionally, you could also attempt to complete certain awards. These awards are gonna give you victory points along with, uh, of course, these yellow ones as well. Basically at the end of the game, all you're gonna be trying to do is gather as many of those yellow cards as possible and or awards and then if you have the most you're going to win now there's a lot that goes involved in the game composition and there's a lot of cool little things as to how you make their words what special abilities are going to be on them whether they're going to have symbology on them whether you pay points in order to use certain abilities or whether you don't and of course nasty things like hot tomatoes these guys here are pain in the butt especially if you get them and can't pay for them uh and the game will continue and it'll vamp up and you'll be able to create bigger and bigger words and like i said at the end of the game whoever has the most points is the winner all right, let's go ahead and show you what everything looks like in composition, and then I'll give you a round of play. All right, so here is composition and everything included in the game. And as you can see, there's quite a lot of stuff going on here. I'm just going to go over the basic components of the game before we go and jump into what is going to be uh, in the game when you get to see everything close up, because there's a lot of cards you need to see close up in this game. Uh, nevertheless, uh, you have a little cheat sheet, which is nice to give to every single player. And it looks like you can play with up to five players in this one. Now, there are different ones that tells you what they, what, how much they cost and what they're called like up here these guys here are called uh, ovations these are basically cards that are going to allow you to add to your locked row and you're going to be basically getting to utilize these they're all different letters some of them will give you some abilities and whatnot these are awards here and these are going to be used or gained whenever you completely successfully uh do a word that it requires you to do so for instance uh create a performance that earns you 20 more points uh, pretty easy spell a word with five letters or more that begins and ends with the same letter pretty simple right now it's hard to actually do that on on the board but it's easy to understand how you're going to be getting these points here you're also going to be getting these cards which i believe are called chorus cards and they're simply going to be different letters and some of them have different abilities. Some of them are going to be splatty tomato cards and nasty things, and you'll be utilizing them. Some of them have extra letters on them. Nevertheless, uh, you'll get a certain point score at the top of them, and you'll be trying to basically place down number equal to the number of players, which I'll show you in a second here for setup, and people go around and start buying them, right? Uh, these ones over here are called crescendo cards, and they're the ones that cost more, but they're also more useful. They give you stuff like doubling your performance score with, score with a W, and then you get like a Y here that can be used as an A, E, I, or U. Unfortunately though, they don't lock, and lock cards are what you, uh, what you really want because you'll be able to use them over and over again. These guys will get discarded after you utilize them. Over here are your points, which are going to be in red, the singular, and in blue, the fives. So it gives you, you get more and more, you start using the fives, right? There's a comp composition here as you, you'll increase based on the number of players to start with, and then you'll increase every single time one of these gets bought, and more blue cards will come out every round, so there'll be more choices involved with the players. You also will get to choose a character and all the characters are different you got like a sun you got an owl a hog a cat so on and so forth they'll have their own unique abilities and they'll also come with their own unique letters to start with sun will actually come with an s a u and an n and one of them will also give you a special ability and they all give you points and you'll be utilizing these over and over again they'll start as locked cards so you're always going to have them and you can kind of manipulate them with the other letters you get to make other words and if you're a good wordsmith you'll be able to pull this off there's also this ghost note which is basically a while but it'll cost you one it's a great little thing to have and then i lost the black stick but i have one that's similar this is basically a chopstick but it'll do uh, i'm sure the game is going to come with a nicer one than what i'm showing you here but it's a little uh comp it's a little baton for music and it basically determines who the first player is and that is pretty much what you get in the game so to set it up for a three-player game take the composition and put it at three then you're going to give every single player a character i'll well, set it over here i guess and then there are three letters and so i'll just go ahead and deal a couple of these guys out this is what mud where's mud at here's mud and uh so on and so forth you'll keep doing that for all the players though you're going to make sure that you have your character card on this side and then you're going to have the letters that are locked on the right hand side 
Uh, these cards over here are basically going to be your chorus, and they're basically what you're going to be able to lock if you don't use when you draft, and then you'll be able to use them in words, and they'll, they're going to go away. Any cards on this right-hand side are going to be locked, and they stay there forever. And up here in the composition is basically your performance. When you utilize those, they either go back to your locked or they'll get discarded. That's basically when you're going to be making words and whatnot. You can also divvy out these chorus cards, one for each player, so basically X, right? X equal the number of players, which will get increased as people get these guys here. These, both of these, you got your um, awards and whatnot, are going to be based on the number of players in the book. So in a three, two or three player game, it's five, I believe, of each of these guys here. So you'll deal out five of these. Make sure you shuffle them and deal them out randomly. Get rid of the rest. You won't be utilizing them. And the same will go for the awards. You're not supposed to look at them like I'm doing, but I'm not really reading them, so it's okay. You're also going to start off with two of these blue ones at all times. They are always going to come out. And so basically now you're going to have your round ready. Everybody's got their their character, they've got their letters, and then they've got the amount needed for each of these little piles here. These don't refresh, but these ones do every round, and so do the blue ones. So you're always going to get two blue ones, and you'll always at least get three of the green cards. And the ghost note, once it gets bought, and used, because it has to be used, it goes right back. So the next player can go ahead and buy it if the first player wants it or any other player in the round. And that's basically what happens to start the game off, the setup of the game. And uh, we'll go ahead and show you a round of how a, uh, how a game, how the game works, kind of. And then we'll go ahead and get into a review of what I think about the game composition. Okay, so I went ahead and set it for two players just because it's going to be easier. And uh, there's a couple of things to note. These here are actually the note cards. And over here on this side is going to be the chorus. But uh, just a couple different grammatical errors, I guess. Nevertheless, we're ready to start the game off. We have the Sun character. He starts with five money. Everybody else is going to start with one unless it says otherwise. And which is this imp here. You usually get two course slot uh, areas in the side here, unless of course you're going to be, I believe there's one called the hog that gets three, and this guy here only gets one. But you can get new ones from this deck here if you find the right ones here. It'll give you a bonus slot, giving you two slots to uh, utilize, or even more if you get lucky enough. Uh, of course they cost money though, right? Just for now, I'll put this over here to signify how much each of these things cost. This one here is going to be for one. Uh, these guys here are always for five. Uh, yeah, that's right. And then up here, these guys here are all 20. So quite quite a lot to buy these guys here. But just so you guys have an idea of the cost for all of these cards here. And like I said, I dealt out two cards for two players. And in a two or three player game, you put five of each of these guys out here. Going to give the baton to somebody. We'll give it to the sun to start off with first. And then the drafting is going to begin. In which case, he gets to choose as the sun. He could buy either one of these for five. Or you could buy an ND or, or a Y, and these are free. Or you can buy this one for one. And this is basically a wild. Um, so what do we want to do? Maybe we'll go for the ND. And whenever you buy something, you put it up there. That's a free way, freebie. In which case, this guy now, he can go ahead and buy either this wild here or this Y. He'll probably just take this one here. He'll put it over here. And then after that, this player gets a choice. Now, because there's no freebies left, he can choose to take this one or he could choose to buy one of these two. But if he doesn't want to, he can just pass. When he passes, that will end the round. However, what he actually wants to do is buy... Oh, I thought that was a... Maybe he'll buy this one here. So he will actually go ahead and buy this one. So he'll spend his five. He will go to... Uh, oh, actually, no, he won't actually spend because this is the last one, which means if it's the last one, it doesn't cost anything. So he'll put it up here. Now it'll go to this player over here. This player cannot afford these. There's nothing left to purchase. So he's going to pass and the round will end. Normally this thing costs one, but remember, whenever it's the last one here to pick up, it is free. After that happens, the round is pretty much coming to an end and players are going to use their locked cards, their cards in their course, and any cards that they picked up during the drafting phase, and they're going to try and make words. Now, in this case, the imp has something interesting. If he makes two-letter words, he's going to score uh, double his performance score, and then he only starts with one of these here. And if he makes a P word uh, that's three letters, he actually gets to give a symbol on this card. Now, symbols are pretty simple how they work. This will tell you exactly what it is. You want to try and match symbols. So if you get three S symbols, uh, then you can score uh, four roses at, or draw a card from the Crescendo deck. So you can actually get more and more points via the symbols up here. Now, none of these cards have any symbols, so uh, we're not going to worry about it right now. Oh, here's one right here. So if there's two symbols up here in his word, he'd get to do something, something fun. Now, this player, unfortunately, doesn't have anything really to make. So he's going to go ahead and put this Y over here for safekeeping because he's got that one slot to save for the next round. He'll place Imp up, and that's the word he's going to make, which will score him uh, three points when it's uh, his turn. Uh, but 
uh, luckily for the sun here, the sun has S, and then we have an A from this right here, and that could make sand if you wanted, S-A-N-D. It's pretty useful. So in this case, the S is the first letter, which will score him two points, and then this one here is just gonna give him, his, give him one, and this one here will give him four points. So that's a pretty good score on the first round of the game. And after that, he'll take all of these things here. Now, certain ones were gonna give you certain abilities, in which case you would go through them and do that before the next player's turn. He's got a total of seven, so he'll keep two of these, take one of these and put it over here. When, and then he'll put all the locked ones back. He'll return the ghost, the ghost always goes back, and any of the green ones that get utilized or non-locked blue ones will get put in a discard pile. And now it's this guy's turn. He's just gonna simply get one, two, and three. One for each of these guys here. And he's gonna put them in his character or whatever and put the rest of his lock cards back. And then the baton will pass and two more cards will pop out, in which case player is going to keep going. Now he's got his locked card that he can use if he needs to. And he's also gonna have first dibs on either M, V, or this one here. He'll take this one here, the ghost card, which is gonna cost him one because it wasn't the last one chosen. This player over here may go for the M because there's some there's some points on that one there and there's also a symbol and then this player may choose this one here in which case that would end the round unless the son wanted to buy one of these guys here. Maybe he would. He'll buy the V. It'll cost him five. And he can double the performance value. You can also save it for later. And they'll make their words and whatnot. And that's basically a game that's going to keep going like that. Now, if anybody bought one of these on their on their turn during the drafting phase, because you can do that for 20, you can't access the, one of these on that round. So you can only get, you get, to get one of these little symbols here per round. But they all have different abilities. This one says you can couple letters, to, uh, couple, uh, couples, uh, copies letters and powers of an unpurchased ovation card or one of your own. So it'll actually work as one of these guys here if you bought this. And this is also gonna give you victory points at the end of the game. And you can go ahead and pick that up if you have 20. You can also, when you make your words, if any of your words match these awards here, like for instance, if he made a word that spells a word with five letters or more that begins and ends with the same letter. So, uh, uh, if the word pimp, for instance, was five letters, that would be a P and a P at the beginning and the end, that would score him this award here, but he couldn't have picked up one of these guys here, right? And uh, that's pretty much how it goes. It's gonna keep going on and on. Remember, you only can keep the cards over here that are not locked based on the number of spaces you have. One core slot for him, two for him, and you, of course, can get new ones. After they make their words, they're gonna go ahead and discard whatever cards they played. Maybe they'll put this over here. And you're gonna refill the blue areas. You're always gonna have two there. And these are gonna come out. Now remember, let's say, for instance, maybe he bought this one somehow. He, he made a lot of money. He'd get to keep that card. It would go into his locked space because it's a locked card. And because one of these got bought, this composition will go up to three and mix the game will go a little faster because now there's an extra card to draft. That's pretty much how you play the game. Let's come up and talk about it. All right, so before we get into the game, Caveats. Caveats, the thing I always do. Let's talk about some of the cards here. You got these blue ones here. Sometimes they're going to be locked, in which case they'll go on your right hand side. You can have as many locked cards as you want. They protect them from going away. The chorus is the only area that will save the cards for the next round, but if you have no spots left, they go away as well. Tomato cards. This one here says you get to place it under an ovation card of your choice, and this card costs an additional 10 points to purchase, and when taken, you also take the golden tomato card. It's a costly card to pull, but it's worth a lot. Uh, this W here doubles your performance value if you add it to your word. Really good, right? If your word's worth 10, it gets worth 20. And there are certain cards, uh, uh, certain awards, like this one here, it says you get, tw if you have 20 or more points on a word, that will score you that award. Bonus chorus slots, like I showed you, that's, that imp needs them. That imp only has one, so that's a useful card to purchase. It still purchases like any other blue card, it still costs five. You'll also find gold and tomato cards in the green deck, and you'll find these hand cards in the, um, in the, in the core deck as well. I said that right. It's words and grammar, right? Uh, give another maestro of your choice four points to take this card here. That happens instantly when you pick the card up, not when you put it down in the word. And then you have ability cards. When you play your word, you'll go through the word and you'll choose whether or not you want to pay for abilities. They'll tell you if you want to. If you have the money to pay for them, you can. But if you don't, you're not going to get paid for the word until after you finish going through all the abilities. In which case, this one says discard any uh, any card in another maestro's chorus. So any card they're saving, you can get rid 
rid of it. Really cool as well. There's a lot of different things you can do in this game, and you're not just building words, but you're also uh, manipulating the cards to utilize their abilities as best you possibly can, and try and inherently conjunction them with the character you have and the letters that you're provided with to start the game off. And there's positives and negatives in that, so let's go ahead and talk about my review. First thing is first, this is a word building game. If you do not like games like Scrabble or other word building games, you're probably not going to enjoy this game because you're going to need to manipulate the cards to build the best words as possible and try and score these awards or score enough points to earn these bonus cards here that will allow you to use them for more and more words. It's one of those things where the more you, the better you do, the faster you're going to accomplish in this game. So there's a little bit of a snowballing effect that can occur. If you're not the greatest speller in the world and you're playing against one that is, you're probably not going to win this game no matter how skilled you are. Unless you manipulate the special powers and the points, which can happen as well. Uh, nevertheless, though, just to give you an idea of that. Not only that, but you start off with the three with three letters, and that may or may not help you depending on uh, what letters they are. Like Imp, for instance, only gets one chorus slot, and he has an ability that if you play a two-letter word, he's going to let you double the bonus. And sometimes you can get even eight or maybe even twelve points to do that. But it's very it's not as likely as you'd think, especially if people start hate drafting you. Uh, and not only that, but the P is a card that you can put in the front, and if you do, you'll attach two other letters to it, and you can get a special symbol of your choice, which can give you some bonuses as well. The sun is gonna be one of those that utilizes the S a lot, so you're gonna, in turn, be utilizing those three locked cards quite a lot. So you'll be making a lot of the same type of words, and when you can't make a word, there's always your base word to make, so you're always gonna be at least able to make three to four points, roughly, when playing down a word, which I guess could be a positive and a negative, depending on how you look at it. If you wanna be making more and more words, you'll have to be utilizing that analysis paralysis tactic that can, can happen in a game like this, because you're sitting there with 10 letters on board, and you gotta make an eight letter word, and you're like, okay, well, I got two O's and an N and two D's and a C and a Z. I'm like, what can I do to make it? I need to make an eight letter word with, with this stuff. Like, oh, I can't look in the dictionary. And so you're going through all of that. And for me specifically, I suffer from analysis paralysis in, in these type of games, which is why I don't typically play them all that much. It's not that I don't like them or they're not good, but I'm just not very good at them. Now, my wife, on the other hand, who plays these games, loves them and she knocks down words like nobody's business. Oh, a vowel on each end of the word? Nope problem. Eight letters? Okay. 20 points? No problem. I'm sitting there going, I guess I'll just use imp again. <laughs> and so for players like me that can't really think of things like that, it can be quite frustrating. On top of that frustration, when you draft cards out and you go, oh, I really need that CH or that SH or whatever, and you're waiting to get that card and somebody else snags it, whether to hate draft against you or whether because they need that card just as much as you do, you don't get that opportunity to pull. And you're like, ah, now I have to make imp again <laughs> or something smaller that you don't want to necessarily make. Um, another thing to note, I suppose, is while you're playing the game, other than just the fact that you're going to be making similar words with the words that you have, but you score these awards based on turn order. And I'd like to see it where you just, everybody has an opportunity to play the words. And let's say for instance, you spell a word with five letters or more that begin and end with the same letter. Um, I don't know, goggle, -g, right? And you have two Gs at the end of the beginning. Uh, if you and your opponent both do that, they should actually award both players, I think, for the round. I think that'd be a more fair process for the matter, but I can't really, say I dislike it or, or like it one way or another. I just prefer it so that everybody gets a chance, especially if you're like, oh, I made an eight letter word. Oh, but he was one step ahead. He was one turn ahead of me. And so he actually made the letter. It was the same turn, but one player ahead of me and he made the same type of word and scored the points and I get, I get nothing. Um, but otherwise it's a fun word game. I know I've got into detail with my critiques on it. And that's just because I'm not very good at these kind of games and that doesn't, perturb me away from playing them because I still enjoy them. I enjoy people's company while playing them and I learn. I get to learn what new words are, which is really useful and I think really good for kids as well. This is going to be a fun family game. This is a good, uh, anybody who likes Scrabble and likes music, putting those together, this is going to be your type of game, hands down. Now the music theme is it's, it's, they added a music theme to basically a drafting word building game, but I don't mind it. I think it's fun and it's cute and it's interesting. I don't know if it's painted on theme necessarily, but I didn't really feel like I was creating, I mean, I guess I felt like I was kind of creating music because there were those symbols and whatnot. 
Yeah, so I'm like, I'm kind of in between with that, but overall solid fun game. Definitely check out Composition if you like word building games and if you enjoy a little bit of take that and drafting all mixed into one with some crazy little aspects that I didn't mention just so you get a little surprise in the game while you're playing it. All right, well, check it out down below, currently on Kickstarter, Composition. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter card game review. If you'd like to check out more of these uh, type of games, go ahead and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. That's in the blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Don't forget to also go ahead and check out our, our Kickstarter pages and all that good stuff. And we do our uh, big giveaways. I think we're giving away dogs right now. And of course, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment for more videos like this. You can go ahead and hit that notification bell at the top there. You can see more and more videos that we produce. We try to produce at least a video every day, except on the weekends. I like to have at least one or two days off if possible. Eh, not always the case though. So. But also go ahead and check out Composition. It's a fun little music style word creating mumble jumble game. It's crazy. It's got a lot of fun and little exciting elements to it. Provided you like this type of game, I think you're going to be into it. And don't forget to check out my friends, everythingboardgames.com and the Giveaway Geek, as well as my friend Ferdinand, the cardboard stacker. He does a bunch of great tutorial work and I definitely think you'll like his stuff. All right, guys, that's all I got for this time. And as always, I look forward to creating lovely, lovely music. <coughs> no.